This is our shear and beams lab. So for this lab, we decided to illustrate the difference between a beam with shear versus the same thickness without. And we decided to do that with 3D prints. So right here we have a bunch of 3D printed single layer thickness sheets. They're made to represent a Hot Wheels track. We will be using a Hot Wheels car. And when you 3D print, you're just stacking these on top of each other. Instead of gluing together, well, you're gluing them together just by the heat of melting the plastic. So our first one is going to be individual sheets, and our second one is going to be one printed structure, but it's going to be the exact same pattern of printing with no infill. So it will be the same thing, just all one piece. All right, this is our uh, test of beam deflection without shear, and this is seven individual layers of 3D printed thicknesses. And this is a Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series, and we're gonna test it. And it looks like we're getting a beam deflection of about a half an inch down from our starting point with the individual layers without shear. All right, so we decided to do the calculations to see what our expected deflection is after doing our test of deflection with our seven individual stacked layers. So we use one of the beam diagrams in the back of the book. It's just one for two point loads, which are the two wheels on the car and two reaction supports. So after doing that, we found our total deflection should be around 0.218 inches. And our actual was half an inch. So it was off by a decent degree. All right, so our reasoning for why we think we did not get exact results for our calculations is due to the cross-section areas for 3D printed components. So for a typical cross-sectional area, it would just be a square, you know, our base and our height. But as you all know, FDM printers don't work like that. They distribute small, thin layers of plastic. And if we were to do a real cross section of this 3D printed part, it would look something more like this. And if you can zoom up in on that, you can see that it's circles and we have some air gaps, which is less area, which would give us a lower I value. So we went ahead and calculated what we believe we would get for a solid FDM printed piece, which is just seven layers, all printed in succession. But we decided that it should be the same deflection as using our existing seven layers and gluing them together. So we figured, why not try them both? Because we calculated them to be the same value because their I values should really be the same. So this is what we got. It's a very low number. It's below a 16th of an inch. We can't really measure that accurately, but we can see if it's less than a 16. And if it is, we know it's roughly about what we expect. All right, so here we have some 3M high strength adhesive, and we have the seven layers we showed you previously. Now we're gonna bond them together using this spray adhesive to see what it looks like when they have shear forces. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try our solid piece of track, which is seven whole layers that were done in succession. And as you can see, the deflection with our Toyota Land Cruiser is significantly lower than having these seven individual layers stacked. And we were also curious to see what would happen if we bonded the seven individual layers together. And if I take our load off and swap these guys out, you can see that it is still significantly less than it was originally before.